Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I'm bringing you today's word for September 25th, 2018. I am teaching a series entitled Standing on a Word from God, where we are learning how to get a word from God and how to, how to stand in faith until the full manifestation of that word in our lives, in the earth. This is how we're supposed to live. We don't live by bread only. Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 4 that we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So this is Standing on a Word from God, part 20. And we've been really kind of just focused on Abraham. We'll deal with other people later. So this is standing on a word from God, part 20. I'm calling this, sometimes you cannot confer with man. Sometimes you cannot confer with flesh and blood or with man. And so I I'm getting this from something that I, sh I mentioned yesterday in the video. And I want to just pull the string on this thought. So we looked at yesterday, Genesis chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. But I said something about the Apostle Paul. So I also want us to read Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 through 16 and then we'll get into it. So Genesis chapter 22 verses 6 through 8. The Bible says Abraham took the wood for the sacrifice. He put it on his son's shoulder. Abraham took the special knife and the fire and both he and his son went up together to the place for worship up on top of the mountain. And then Isaac said to his father, he said, hey, daddy. He said, what's up, son? He said, I see the wood. I see the fire, but I don't see the lamb. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham said, well, God has himself. I'm not going to try to explain this thing. God himself is going to provide the sacrifice. And he was like, all right, daddy. So, and then they went. And I dealt with that yesterday that sometimes you just can't explain everything. And I'll pull the string on that thought. And then um, in, in the New Testament, Galatians chapter one, verses 11 through 16, the apostle Paul said, listen, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that I preach is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man I wasn't around when Jesus fed the 5,000. I wasn't around when Jesus walked on water. I wasn't one of those apostles that got to hang out with Jesus for three and a half years. I did not receive this from any man. No, I taught it. Uh, nobody taught me this. I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. I received it from direct revelation from Jesus himself. After he was resurrected from the dead, he came and visited me and spoke to me. And this is the gospel that I preach. Now, you've heard of the way that I used to be though in Judaism, how I intensely persecuted the church of God. I tried to destroy the church. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age. Man, I was being groomed, man. I was the man when I was in Judaism. I was beyond those of my own age, beyond those of my own people. I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers, but when God, this is how good God is. God, I didn't even know it, but God had already set me apart before I, I did all those things from my mother's womb. And he called me by his grace that I might reveal his son and preach him to the Gentiles. And so when this happened, when I got the revelation that God had called me from my mother's womb, that God had called me to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, that I was on the wrong side of this thing, that I was persecuting Christians when I was supposed to be a Christian, when I was persecuting the church, when I was supposed to be a leader in the church. When this happened, when I got the revelation of this, the Bible says I did not confer or consult with any human being. The King James says that I could not confer with flesh and blood. I couldn't have a conversation with anybody about this because look, I mean, I was a terrorist against them and then God called me to lead them. And so I could not have a, a, a discussion uh, with, about that with anybody. I just had to confer with God. I had to do what God was calling me to do, just like Abraham couldn't. So what does this mean to you today? I just have two things to share with you on this morning. But I'm teaching you about the life of faith, how, it, how we're called and commanded to walk and live by faith. And if you are going to live by faith effectively, you're going to have to learn what I'm saying right here. Now, two things for you this morning. Open up your heart now to receive what God is saying. You ready? Here we go. Two things. Number one, look at me. You cannot explain spiritual things to unspiritual people. You just can't. Those without the Holy Spirit, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 14, it says, listen, those that don't have the Holy Spirit, the spiritual things that come by the Holy Spirit to the people that don't have the Holy Spirit, it seems foolishness unto them. Neither can they know them. So you can't try to explain spiritual things to unspiritual people because it's going to seem foolishness to them. So don't even waste your time attempting to explain the unexplainable. Don't try to waste your time attempting to explain the things of God. They are the things of God and you can only receive them by faith. If you want to tell, if you want to talk to anybody that's unspiritual about anything, 
Talk to them about Jesus. Let's get them born again. Because once they're born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will reveal spiritual things to unspiritual people, right? Once they have the Holy Spirit, they'll be able to receive it because God will speak to them spirit to spirit. See, many times, even those that are born again, you're like, well, Rick, you're talking about people that are not born again, but what about people that are born again that don't understand me? Well, they don't understand you because they don't have the, revel the revelation you have. If God spoke something to you and God didn't speak it to them concerning you, then it's hard. You could try to explain it to them, but unless they get the revelation of what God revealed to you, unless they get the revelation of what it is that you're called to do, unless they get the revelation of what you're launching out in faith for, then they're not going to understand it. And if they don't understand it, then good intention people, people that love you, people that care about, about you, people that actually have a good heart, people that love God, they'll try to talk you out of it. That's why you can't be talking to everybody about it. They will try to talk you out of it because they don't have the revelation of it. So you got to be careful. When God told Abraham to kill his son, he couldn't talk to nobody about that. He was like, man, you crazy. I'm not going to go have a conversation with my cousin. I'm not going to have a conversation with my friends. Listen, no, I'm going to go do what God called me to do. You can't have a conversation with people about this kind of stuff. Abraham himself didn't understand it. He was doing it by faith. So if he didn't understand it, how in the world was someone else going to understand it? If he talked to anybody, they was going to try to talk him out of it. See, when God leads you to do something, even if you don't understand it fully and you're launching out in faith, unless you're going to go to somebody that is spiritual, unless you're going to go to somebody that is assigned to speak prophetically over your life, unless you're going to go to somebody that will be able to perceive the things of God and then, you know, speak to you and communicate with you with light, precious faith and build you up and not tear you down. For the most part, you got to be very careful who you go to, because if you go to some your friends, if you go to your family and God is leading, leading you to do something that sounds crazy, then because they love you, they're going to try to talk you out of it. Even though they love God, they love you. And they love you so much that they don't want you to look crazy. They love you so much that they don't want you to get hurt. They love you so much that they don't want to see you go through this crazy experience, even though God is telling you, the Holy Spirit is telling you to do it. So you have to do it. So you cannot confer with flesh and blood. You just can't seek. Listen, sometimes you're not going to find anybody to co-sign with you on what God is telling you to do. You just have to launch out in faith to go do it and you will never be successful living by faith if you have to share everything with everybody. So you need to be very careful who you share things with. You need to be very careful. You have a few people in your life that God has assigned to speak over you. You give them license to speak into your life. You can talk to them. Other than that, you got to be very careful who you share precious information with. You can only share precious things with precious people. All right. Number two, I only have two points for you this morning. You must do what God is leading you to do even when you don't have anybody to talk to about it. I mean, like e even when you, you can't, let's say you don't have anybody to talk to about it. You still got to do it. You still got to do it even though you don't have anyone to confer with. The Apostle Paul said, listen, um, I don't know. He's trying to explain this to people because some people knew him later and they didn't know, you know, they didn't know his B.C. days. Right. So his before Christ days. So he's like, listen, I don't know if you knew this, but I used to be known as Saul of Tarsus. And when I was Saul of Tarsus, I was being groomed, right? I was like a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I was being groomed. I studied under Gamaliel. I mean, he was the best teacher of the law at the time. And I was being groomed under Gamaliel. I was being groomed under the Pharisees. I was groomed to be a Pharisee of the Pharisees. And, and, and I had so much passion. I had so much zeal that I actually had zeal with no knowledge, right? But I had so much zeal that the Pharisees weren't even passionate enough. enough. They, the, the Pharisees were not even radical enough for me. So I joined the zealots and the zealots. These were people that were so crazy, right? For the things uh, uh, of Judaism that they would even kill somebody. They would literally kill somebody who didn't believe what they believed. And so, th th I mean, this is like that these crazy people, I mean, and people are still killing people in the name of religion today, which is ridiculous. But anyway, the, he was a zealot. And so he was like, I was going out killing Christians. I was going out having Christians killed. And while I was on my way to Damascus, on the road to Damascus to have more Christians killed, God spoke to me. And then God revealed to me that I was called from my mother's womb. And then God revealed to me that I was supposed to preach the same gospel that I was coming up against. And God revealed to me that I was supposed to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And when this happened, I could not confirm with flesh and blood. I could not consult with any human being. I could not go ask the approval of a man to do what my God was telling me to do. 
I had to go do it even though I was misunderstood and I knew I was going to be misunderstood, but I still had to do what God was telling me to do. Think about it. He was a terrorist against the church and he was called to lead in the church. Yes, this is crazy, but he had to do it. And I've had to do it and you've had to do it. Listen, God is going to lead you to do things that make no sense to the natural man. And when those things happen, you cannot confer with man. You have to choose to be in sync with God, even if it seems like you're out of sync with everybody else, even at the risk of looking foolish, even at the risk of looking crazy, you have to do what God is telling you to do. You have to do what God is leading you to do. And you cannot allow any man, even people that love you, your parents, your sister, your brother, your cousins, people that love you are going to tell you, no, you're crazy. Don't do that. Why? Because they don't want to see you get hurt and they really love you and their heart is in the right place, but they're just not hearing what God told you to do. And you have to do what God tells you to do, even at the risk of looking foolish, even when you can't consult with a human being, even when you cannot confer with flesh and blood, you have to launch out in faith because God, who sits on the circle of the earth, is telling you to do it. God is not giving you a suggestion. He is giving you a commandment. And so we are the just and we live by faith. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me now in faith from a believing heart. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I expect, Father, that you will do all you said you would do in my life. I live by every word you speak to me. I am quick to obey what you say. <laughs> even when I can't talk to anyone about it. And even when it does not make sense in this world, you are spiritual, not sensual. To follow you by faith, I have to walk by faith over sight. And this is what I do. I do what you say. And I do not require the validation of a man to do what my God is telling me to do. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply this word in your life so that you can prosper, so that you can become the man, the woman that God called you to be. be as you head into this day, make a decision right now that you're going to do what God tells you to do, even when at the risk of looking foolish, at the risk of looking crazy, even when you can't talk to anyone about it, you still do it. You are, you are, you are making a decision right now that you are going to walk and live by faith. And before you leave this screen, please share this message with someone that you know. Let's, let, let's tell everyone everywhere about Jesus and how we're supposed to live so that we can leave a mark in this world that will not easily be erased. I love you and God loves you. God bless you.